Hop, I just uh, showed our viewers how we can uh, get a blade thinned down and sharpened and polished in a really short amount of time, but it's, yeah. it's not all that pretty looking. It's just really what we we'll call functional. Yep. Uh, how about you show our viewers the extended process, somebody who's really interested in taking this whole Carter sure. Stanley method to the nth degree and, if, and time is not Absolutely. an issue. I'm going to do a little bit more thorough version of our method and I'm going to use uh, Murray's perfect model kitchen knife here, which I'm really excited to sharpen. So I'm going to start out with um, A, assessment. Uh, we're going to assess this knife and to do that, the first thing I need to do is clean it a little bit. So I'll get it wet here and wipe it down. You know, it's a beautiful clean knife here, so not too much to do. Um, but I'm going to sight down it, make sure that the knife is nice and straight. Of course it is. Uh, I'm going to look at the spine. It's just beautiful. Now I'm going to look at the line of the knife. It's nice if you have a, a white back wall. So you can really see the line and if there are any dip divots or dips or high points or chips or whatever. Um, in this one, I see a tiny high spot right here and a little bit of a high spot here. So we'll take that out in profiling just a little later. So mm -hmm. I think I will thin this knife a little bit. It's already a, a thin knife, but they can know, always be thinner. They can always be thinner. Yeah. So I think that's where we're going to start. Well, to do that, I think I'm going to go right down um, to my 70 micron stone here and I'm going to start out by flattening it with our coarsest. This is 130 micron, uh, very coarse. Well, you can hear it. Listen to that. Yeah, this is big abrasive. Here. So I use sort of an X method here, and then I usually turn the plate, and then I go and chamfer. That probably helps prevent any of those edges from cracking off in use. Really does, yeah. and you know, even a practice sharpener every once in a while sort of clicks right off the end of the stone and that'll you know chip the end of the stone mm -hmm. so if you go and chamfer it there it gives it a little more support yeah and heaven forbid if you happen to drop the stone of course oh, the my. aluminum backing will prevent most of the damage from happening but if it is it happens to hit the corner a chamfered corner is a lot stronger than a sharp corner all right so well I, i'm going to start right out here with thinning i'm going to do just what murray did here i'm going to put the knife flat down on top of the secondary edge and uh, I'm just going to start working here. I can feel it and I'm controlling with my wrist here like this but I'm keeping my arm straight. So what I try not to do is bend my wrist in in these other directions. I try to keep my wrist good and straight just you know like I'm pointing a, a uh, a pointer. pencil, yeah, yeah, a pointer right down from my elbow right to the tip of that knife there and I try to work the whole stone then I move my pressure and I can certainly do this at you know a, um, a little bit of a skew angle uh, some people prefer to and that's just fine I see you're working it in sections. Yep. Just move it because it's really where I put this pressure down. That's really where the cutting action is happening. And then right down there at the tip. So we'll get the whole thing. Now I'll just add for our viewers understanding that at first it's really advisable to do a lot of these motions very slowly and very deliberately. And as you gain experience and confidence, everything can become a little faster, especially as you gain some muscle memory. We definitely don't want you guys to injure yourself while you're trying to sharpen a knife. Uh, and we also want to make sure that you're doing it in a controlled manner. We want, to, we want you to, even though you can't see the part of the blade that's being abraded because it's hidden from view, as you go slowly, you can actually feel where it's being abraded and then 
uh, every now and then you're going to look just as HAP is right now to confirm with your eyes that you're getting the abrasion right where you want to. You know, and I, I think you can see here because I've, I've only done one side of the knife so you can really compare. So you can see that my pressure is back here behind the primary edge. And I'm really trying not to hit this part of the knife too much. I'm trying to remove metal mm -hmm. right back here and thin the, thin the blade back. That looks um, great. And then if you look at the other side, see I haven't touched, you know, you can still see your original manufacturing scratches. But that's going to go right away here. So I'm going to just turn over here and um, put it in my left hand. And um, I'm going to use my right hand, and it, for me, it's kind of interesting. Um, I feel like this hold-down hand is such an important part of sharpening because it's really where you're applying pressure. So even though I'm holding the knife in my left hand, and I'm a right-handed person, I actually don't really feel like this is left-handed sharpening. <laughs> it's kind of tricky, you know. But I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did before. Now, at what point, Hap, do you clean off your stone? I can see there's lots of metal particles there and there's lots of stone particles. Yeah, uh, you know, I've been going here for a little bit and um, why don't I just look at that? I can grab my plate and it doesn't take much, just a few strokes there. And I can see very quickly where... Yeah, I'm not really digging into the stone too much. Maybe I'm a little heavier here, and you can see I'm a little lighter out on the ends, but that's that's pretty typical. So now you're still on the secondary edge. You're still thinning at this I'm point. I'm still thinning at this point. We're going to mm -hmm. take our time here. We're not we're not in a rush. And, um, some some people kinda... say that this is uh, can be meditative, almost like Zen in the art of sharpening blades. It's really fun for me. And, you know, I can do this for a long time because I'm not bending my wrists. If I were to bend my wrists, you know, I'd have to put a lot of pressure into my hands. But because I've, I'm holding with real straight wrist and an open hand like this, now I'm using my shoulders and even my hips. And you can, you can really see that. So it's a very economical use, efficient use of your body motion and energy. Yeah. And sustainable over a long time. It is. It really is. You know, I've, I've done this for hours and, you know, I didn't even realize the time had passed. Well, let's look at what we've done and see if there are any areas that need any further well, that's, that's looking beautiful. I can really see where you've worked that secondary edge. Uh, we know that you've taken a lot of metal off because we can see it on your stone. Yeah. And uh, you're behind the primary edge still, so we know you're thinning it. So that's got to just drastically improve the cutting performance of that knife, uh, what a lot of people don't fully uh, appreciate when they first hear about sharpening is they think everything about sharp is what's happening on just the primary edge. It but really... that's just the part that initiates the cut. It sure is. And it's your secondary edge geometry that allows you to push the blade through things like your mm -hmm. acorn squash, uh, you know, piece of shoe leather or whatever it is you're cutting. Yeah, it's really very important to sharpen back here behind the edge. And if you look carefully, you'll see that I haven't even touched the primary edge. Yeah, I can still see the original yeah, primary edge. It is, it's, it's all right there. Mm -hmm. So we're just finishing up the gross thinning here and it looks great so i think we're ready to move on to profiling yep assess thin profile, profile polish and joint yes sir wow the thinning looks really really good i got a good amount of metal off it it feels really good all along here behind the edge so we're going to move on to profiling and I just want to make sure I've cleaned all that 70 micron abrasive off of there so I don't, you know, get it up on top of this. Uh, you don't want to cross contaminate with your rough grit to your finer grit that you're using now. You got it. I'm ready to start profiling this edge. I'm going to do it on our 35 micron ceramic stone. I'm going to put the knife right flat down as though uh, we were thinning a moment ago. And then I'm just going to rotate my wrist just a little bit here 
to pick up into the primary edge. So I'm going to pick up into the primary edge there like that and I'm going to start working and creating a new primary edge. A lot of people want to know, you know, what's the perfect angle to sharpen a primary edge at? And unfortunately, there is no magic number. I like to tell people just a little bit higher than what you ground the secondary edge at because it really depends on the metallurgy of the blade. It depends on what exactly you're going to be cutting and it depends on the skill of the knife user. If somebody's really hard on knives, they may need to grind a slightly more obtuse primary edge into the bring blade. It up, bring it That's up a right. little higher. But for most people, if they want a really sharp, impressive cutting instrument, then the lower that they hold that primary edge angle at, the better results they'll get. And as they gain some experience and they sharpen the same blade multiple times on the same set of stones, then they can adjust a little bit differently with the same knife depending on what it is they're about to cut. So, Murray, I'm putting my fingers here along the back, uh, the, uh, the opposite side. I've been sharpening here on the left. And so I'm putting my fingers up here and I'm being very careful not to push them forward because the burr is going to curl up this way as I'm putting that new edge, uh, that new primary edge on. So I'm going to feel along the edge and I can feel that metal curled up just like that all the way along. So as I turn the knife over and I get ready to work over here, I'm going to cut that curl off. And what I don't want to do here is just jam it down into the stone and put a lot of pressure on. What that's going to do is just bend that curl right back the other direction. So what I want to do is take a very light cut. First couple of passes here are just as light as they can be. And I'm, I'm cutting along the edge so that the edges support or so that the burr, that flappy material, that it's curling down this way. I, I'm going along the edge so it's all supported and that way the stone is able to efficiently cut that metal right off into the surface of the stone. And that way I didn't bend the metal back up and, you know, and then I'm going to do the other side and bend it back the other direction and that will weaken the edge. So what I'm trying to do here is create a new edge and I'm trying to create it out of new metal and I want to uh, remove the metal all the way down to sort of the root of the burr and try not to leave too much foil or little flappy pieces of metal on there along the way. Of course I will, but as little as I can. Try to minimize that. Minimize that, yeah. Okay, so now I've done these light touches, so now I'm going to do just what I did in the other hand. I'm going to put a little more pressure on here, right? And you can do this slow. You know, you don't need to do it at my speed. You can do it real slow, and as you just said, consistency is everything. It doesn't matter what the actual angle is. Just really try to be consistent. Hold the same angle. Try not to roll up as you come off. Try not to click off the end. You know, try to just as smooth as you can keep a nice, nice angle, just the same and you'll put a new primary edge on so nicely and you can just lift off and come back in. You know, and for people who are just learning this technique, I would recommend only using trailing edge strokes. So I'm, I'm trailing the edge over the surface of the stone. And once you get better, you know, going both directions is fine, but when you're, um, when you're just learning these motions, your body's gonna wanna move kinda all over the place. So my recommendation would be to just simply use these trailing edge strokes. We, we also call that stropping. Stropping mm -hmm. strokes. Imagine that that is a piece of leather, not a stone, a piece of leather, mm -hmm. right? You would, you would never push the edge into the leather, right? You're always gonna, drag over the leather. So yeah, stropping uh, is, a, is, a, is a great technique. So we're going to strop right out on the stone. And it is a little slower to use this method, 
but it's a whole lot more consistent. See how consistent? You know, you can just go right along. And then what am I going to do over here? I'm going to go light with that first pass. And then I'm going to put a little more pressure on. Right? See that? So when you said it's really important to hold a consistent angle as a beginner, yeah, I completely concur. And then even if your angle is a little obtuse, a little bit high, then that can become your baseline. And then with experience, then you can reduce that angle at will, but at least you know where you're at. Absolutely. Yeah. And another thing that's, you know, especially at this, you know, very coarse grit level, um, when we started out and assessed this knife, I noticed there was just a little bit of a high spot right, right, in, right in this area. Mm -hmm. And so I think I want to try to take that down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a lot of pressure right into that little high spot area. And just... That, that looks like you're using the same angle that you were just using. Yeah, same angle, yeah. right? So applying pressure right at that point is going to take that mountain out and um, you know fair in the, the line give you the fair curve over the whole length of the edge so i think we want to you know pay attention to that when we're putting this new primary edge on that in essence will bring the proud areas down to the last molecule of any recession that's yeah. in the edge exactly and you could apply the same principle if you had a chip in the blade as well. You would be actually grinding more steel. You'd be profiling more, grinding more steel off of that primary edge until you had exactly what you were looking for. I'll just add in here that if you're trying to do fine woodworking with a Japanese chisel or a plain blade or you're trying to shave your face with a razor, then an absolutely perfectly profiled primary edge is essential. But if you're in the kitchen and you're just trying to cut your tomatoes and your bacon and you have little chips in the edge, you can just be resolved that with repetitive sharpenings, you're going to eventually get those out. And in, in your first five minute session, you're just trying to make the knife better. You're just trying to make it cut. It doesn't need to have an exactly perfect profile. But for what Hap is trying to do here, trying to make everything perfect in the thorough presentation, then he's obviously addressing this with uh, a higher level of discernment. So, Murray, I think I've um, created a new primary bevel here. I think it's consistent all the way along. And I think we've got a nice uh, line and fair curve here. Why don't you just look I'll at just, it for I'll a second? Check see that what you primary say. edge real quick. Oh boy, yeah, that's, that's moving the pads of my fingers, which means that there's little teeth in there just grabbing right in. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, there's we've no slipperiness at all. Gotten yeah. right through yeah. all the way, uh, all the way out there. So I'm gonna, um, before I progress forward, we left some pretty deep scratching here in the secondary edge. Yes. And I'm just gonna um, knock that down just a little bit. So I'm gonna, instead of raising all the way up to that primary angle, I'm just gonna drop right back down to the um, yeah, perfect. secondary edge here. And I'm just gonna take those scratches out. So you're now at the polishing stage. You've I am. You've assessed it, you've thinned it, Yep. you've reprofiled it, and now you're polishing it. That's exactly yeah. it, that's, that's exactly it. You know what's so exciting about this technique is it will work for anyone using any blade. You just follow these five steps. You can take as little time as you want, as much time as you want. And as you do this sharpening regimen, you are gonna learn a lot. You're gonna gain experience. And eventually, you might even wanna modify it to what works best for you. But until you master the five steps, stick with the always thank polite people in Japan method. Okay, now I'll flip over to the other side. Get some of the slurry oh boy, off. Boy, that's starting to look really good. Hap. Isn't that nice? Yep. It just uh, cleaned all that uh, the scratching out. There's still a little bit more behind there, but I can get that. We'll just give it a little more pressure where those scratches are, and we'll get those as well. Of course, you have to proceed with a lot of caution 
when you're at the polishing step because we've already established a new primary edge on that knife. That knife will cut as it is right now. So you have to be very careful. Yeah, it sure will. Oh, look at that. That got pretty much all of that scratching out. So let's do the other side of the knife. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just put it right down on top of the secondary edge. I'm just gonna clean up any little residual scratches from the 70 micron stone. And then just at the end, we'll raise the angle a bit and just graze along very slowly, clean up anything that might be hanging on that primary edge. Okay, now I think we're ready to move to the next uh, stone. That was great, Hap, and I just love the way your pond here is capturing all of the water and all the slurry. It keeps yeah. the countertop so clean. Yeah, there's a couple little drops here, but very little uh, overspray. Yep, very easy to clean up. Yep, keeps it all together. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can use an alternative to paper towel if you so desire. But it's Warren saying that if you use a normal towel to clean up after sharpening, even if you wash the towel right away, it, the towel will stain because the metal particles in the towel will start to rust and you'll end up with brown spots in your towel. So if you're gonna do this uh, often and, and use a, a normal cotton towel, you might wanna dedicate one towel just for the sharpening process because it, it will get brown with rust stains. We're gonna to continue to polish now with a little bit finer abrasive. We're gonna polish both the primary edge and the secondary edge, just as we did in the last step. Mm -hmm. And I see we've, uh, we were using this stone earlier and I can see some metal embedded into the surface of the stone. It's time to flatten it. Flatten it right out. Now Hap, some people will wonder, does all of this flattening of the stone waste any of the stone or does it wear the stone down prematurely? Well, I think it's just like the last molecule principle. You know, there's a low spot in the stone and we really need to bring all the high spots down to that low spot, but I don't want to go past it. I don't want to waste any extra material, but I think this other material is getting in our way. Mm -hmm. So I think we really have to take that material away and, you know, if you wear one of these stones out, Murray, I think you'll be proud of yourself. I think you're going to gain a lot of experience before you wear one of these stones out. Yeah. We've been using one in the shop now for about four months, aggressively. Seven of us bladesmiths at Carter Cutlery in Hillsborough, Oregon, been working on uh, the, uh, what do we have? We've got the... the 30, uh, 15 micron. We've got the 15, 15 micron in our shop, and we've barely put a dent in it. We've probably sharpened over two or 300 knives on it. It's a lot of sharpening. Yeah, yeah. You know, the other thing that I'd like to add is keeping your stone flat actually saves you time because the stone is working better and the whole job is more efficient. So, you know, what's your time worth? I'm sure it's worth a lot more than the uh, 50 or $60 uh, stone cost. Now this stone uh, has a much finer uh, abrasive particle, so it drags a lot more, you know. The bigger particles have a lot more air between them, and so you can go a lot faster, but when you start getting down to smaller uh, abrasive particles, you start getting a little more grab in the stone. So we're just polishing out. Right now I'm polishing out the secondary edge on the left side of the knife. So I'm just gonna make a, a few final very light passes on the 15 micron abrasive. That's your, you're just polishing up that primary edge, looks like. I am, I yeah. am. And you know, we've got teeth still, but they're becoming very tight. Mm -hmm. it's, it's starting to get, you know, a little scary to touch. Maybe at the tip, we just wanna just get a little few careful strokes there. Yeah, sometimes those tips can be tricky because as the tip gets thin, in cross-section and in uh, profile, it, it can kind of flex up and off the stone as you, as you uh, push it against there. So I found that the, when you get to the close to the tip, you really want to lighten up uh, your pressure. Yeah, you can't use a lot out there. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. Still, we could use just a little more material off of there. So I'm gonna put a little more pressure in there and just 
work that tip with slightly more pressure and do the same thing. I kind of pivot on the point of my finger here when I'm doing these tips. Okay. Yeah, I think we're ready to move. There we go. Yeah. Let's move right on up. Um, so we're going to transition from 15 microns. We're going to cut that roughly in half down to six microns. Now we're getting into an apex that is uh, small. And the apex of the edge, you know, any edge, if you look at it under magnification, is going to be round at some point. If you took the knife and cut it in half and looked at the cross section of the knife, at some magnification, the edge is actually going to be round. And if you draw a line across that round, make a circle, then what we, what we call the diameter of that circle, we call that the apex of the edge. And in my experience, when the diameter of the apex gets below three microns, that's where you can shave with it. That's where it's just razor blade sharp. And so we're using a six micron abrasive now, and I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. I you don't want to cross contaminate the grits. That's right. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's so easy to do and you'll get big scratches, you know, as you start polishing out further. So the more we polish, um, the more we want to be careful about that cross contamination. So I'm going to start right on the secondary bevel here. I'm going to put the knife right flat down on the bevel and start working it. So you're now continuing the polishing procedure. Yeah. So we have assessed the blade. We've thinned it. Yep. We've profiled it, but you're still polishing. So it seems that actually the polishing stage is a stage where you could use up a lot of time. You really could. You know, there's just no end to it. It's it's yeah. it's. Um, you know, my logo is open at the top. It's a triangle or an edge that's open at the top. And my thought was, it's infinite. There's really, you can go as far as you want with this polishing. Yeah, stage. hence the little infinity logo right there between Nano and Hone. I love yeah. it. There's really no finish line when it comes to hand sharpening because you can just really take it to whatever degree you want to from the five minute expedient thinning and, and uh, sharpening of the primary edge to trying to create a masterpiece in steel. Yeah, and I'm just tilting up now. I'm just picking right up into the primary edge and I'm gonna start polishing the primary edge. I'm gonna finish with stropping strokes and then flip it over. And instead of going right to the secondary bevel where I started or secondary edge where I started, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up and very lightly just cut that burr off that I created. And you can see it, there's a little dark line and it just got cut off right in the top of the stone. Okay, and now I'll drop back down into the secondary edge and start polishing that area out. It's very thin and very flexible. It doesn't wanna come off real easily. It wants to kind of be pushed back and forth because it really doesn't have a lot of mass. It's you know, it's easily deflected. It is. It is easily deflected. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a couple more very slow, careful stropping strokes right over the top of the six micron stone. I'm just going to start with a very light one to cut that burr off. Is it fair to say, Hap, that the closer you get to being completed, the more uh, careful and more slowly? You have to do your strokes because you're yeah. just finishing everything up. You want it to be as precise as possible, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This is getting really nice. So I'm, I'm getting real careful with my, with my strokes now. So I'm going to take this six micron stone and put it aside. This is a two micron stone. And currently this is the finest stone that Nanohone offers. We're going to just clean it up a little bit. I need to clean the lapping plate a little bit too, just spray it off. Cleaning the lapping plate between lapping different stones will also help prevent cross-contamination of the grits, right? Absolutely. 
So you can see all the, you know, kind of crud that just got right up there when I started. So I want to start again with a cleaner lapping plate. There we go. Start to clean the whole thing up. All right, now I'm gonna, let me just get the knife as well. Make sure we get all that off of there. The handle, just everything. Just be a little bit careful here at the end to clean up. I'm going to go right back to the secondary edge on the left side, just uh, as we did with the previous stone, and start working my way down that secondary edge, polishing it out. And I'm not really using much pressure. I can feel the abrasive cutting, and I'm just letting the abrasive do the work. Yeah, if you're trying to remove a whole lot of material at this stage, then you probably missed the mark with one of the other grits, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You might as well just drop back and, um, you know, and we're not in a hurry. This is the thorough method. So if you feel you have to drop back, then you should. Now, when you say drop back, you mean go back to a more abrasive stone, either the six micron or the 15 micron. Exactly. Yeah, as far as you need to go. All right, so now I'm going to tip up. I'm going to tip up here and we're going to do the primary edge. Okay, now I'm going to turn over the knife here and use a very light stroke to cut off the burr. And it's nice and clean here, so you should be able to kind of see these two dark lines right here. That's actually the burr being cut off into the stone. And then now I'll work on the secondary edge. We'll just work it. Let the, let the stone do the work here. And just polish out all those previous scratches. We're still in the polishing stage. You know, it's really, it can be as long or short as you, as you need it to be. Um, if, you, if you've got the time and you want to do a thorough job, you can really, you know, polish out after each grit and work right along. And uh, if you don't have time, well, then you just kind of push right through this uh, step. What I found in the process of polishing is when you move up to the next grit, it will either polish the surface you're grinding perfectly or it will reveal deeper scratches from one or two grits back. So yeah. either way, it's instructional if you observe the surface that you're polishing. And that's how you can decide if you want to go drop it back a grit or two to try to get out those rougher scratches. And I've just picked up here, Murray, into the primary edge. And boy, it feels good. I can just feel that edge just gripping the surface and going right along here. A light touch to remove it. Okay. So now I think the next thing is clean up again. Are we finally at our J, our Japan, our jointing? We're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. I mean, we can polish forever, uh, and, and really there's no end to it, and this is looking really good. I can see some areas where I'd like to, you know, go back and get a, a little bit coarser uh, abrasive and work it a little more, but overall, I mean, that's just a spectacular polish. So we're going to stop right there. And um, I'm going to... Oh, you're doing that. I'm just going to review here. What's, oh, boy, that is really beautiful. So you always thank polite people in Japan. You assessed what needed to be done. Yep. You thinned out the secondary edge. You profiled the primary edge. And then what you've been spending a lot of time doing is polishing both the secondary and primary edges. And now you're ready for your last step, which is jointing. Absolutely. I really like this step. So I cleaned up the stone here and got it nice and flat. A little more pressure. There's a lot of water in the pond, but it's holding it real well. And that's a really well designed pond. And again, I love the little plugs that you have in two sides of that pond. If you had it over a sink, yeah. you could just be letting that water yeah. drip right into the sink. Absolutely. Just drain right into the sink. So I'm going to turn the stone here just a little bit so you can see maybe a little better what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to feel the edge and it feels just slightly toothy. 
We had just a little bit of a foil there. You've transformed yeah. the burr, which was rough, yep. and through continuous grits of sharpening and polishing, you've basically refined that burr down to a really, really thin. Think in yeah. terms of like gold foil. Yeah, really, really thin. And I'm going to take the knife and put it right up here on the stone vertically and just so lightly. I can put my other finger up here and just pull it right along. I can just barely feel it gripping into the edge of the stone. And that's it. And you can see this dead, straight, tiny little line in the surface of the stone. And that is the burr that I just cut off or the foil and little bits of metal that are left. And now I'm just going to go back and very lightly do some stropping strokes. Now I'd like to add here that when I tried the jointing method for the first time, I was a little heavy handed. And then it took me a lot more stropping strokes to get that primary edge back to where I wanted it. So can't overemphasize that the jointing technique is a very, very light technique. And you always want to err and caution on the side of underdoing it and not overdoing it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you can say that three times in Rome, right? <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a very, very light touch. Don't want to be heavy handed. So see what you think of that. So you've come back in and you've stropped that edge back in there. Now, do you mind if I test it on the paper? Go for it. Okay, I got a clean piece of paper here. Well, I, get, I couldn't even hear it cut. <laughs> Couldn't even hear a cut. That was just, that was too easy. What about a little bit of uh... Oh my God, it's popping them in the air. Yeah, popping them in the air. Well, you know, shaving, shaving <laughs> hair that off like arm. A, That looked like a hand mower going yeah. through. <laughs> yeah, well, the hair on the arm is just really a first indicator of sharpness. I think a much better test oh, would be no. to see if we could... Oh no, be careful, Mer. <laughs> oh. Yeah, how about that? We got a bunch of little... Seeing as that I shaved late last night, I would say that that's that's pretty good. <laughs> Go Murray. Okay, Hap. Well, you want to just review that whole whole process verbally and and tell our viewers again, kind of the steps you went through to achieve that. We followed the Carter Stanley method to the letter, literally. You know, we assess the knife, we thin the knife, we profile the knife. We polished the knife and jointed the knife. So, always, always thank, thank polite, polite people, people in, in Japan. Japan.